So, John? Right, we continue on the theme of intermittent exotropia. Our next speaker is Donnie Sue from the University uh, of California at Irvine, and he's going to talk about the use of over minus lenders in children with intermittent exotropia. Donnie, over to you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Donnie Saw. I will be presenting the results from the randomized trial evaluating effectiveness of over minus spectacles in children with intermittent exotropia or IXT on behalf of pediatric eye disease investigator group. Here's a list of writing committee members. And we do not have any financial interest or relationships with this course. The study was funded by the National Eye Institute. Overmanus lens therapy is a non-surgical treatment option for IXT. It is typically used as a temporary treatment to improve control before considering orthoptics or surgery. Some clinicians use it as a long-term intervention by gradually decreasing the power of overmanus lenses and eventually discontinuing them. A pilot RCT, randomized control study by Pettig, found that over menace lenses improved distance exotropia control only after eight weeks of treatment. The primary study objective for our study was to assess the treatment effect of over menace lenses on distance IXT control after 12 months of treatment. We also weaned the participants off of treatment so that we could assess the off treatment effect of over menace lenses on distance IXT control. The control was measured three times throughout each exam and mean of three measures was used to, for data analysis. We measured IXT control at distance and near using the exotropia control score, as you can see here. The examiner assigned the score from zero to five, zero being excellent control with mild phoria, five being constant exotropia or worse control. We enrolled participants three to less than 11 with moderate to poor control IXT. The distance control score had to be two or worse, and magnitude of EXO had to be at least 15 prism doctors at distance. Participants could not have had prior strabismal surgery or over minus therapy more than one doctor. Refective error had to be between one to minus six doctors in the least hyperopic eye. After participants were enrolled, they were randomized to either over minus or non over minus spectacles. The strength of the over minus spectacles was 2.5 doctors. They were seen at six months and 12 months. At 12 months visit, over minus lens strength was reduced by half to 1.25 doctors. And at 15 months, over minus lens therapy was discontinued, and all participants were non over minus spectacles. Participants then came back at 18 months for the final visit for their off-treatment outcome visit. The study visit completion was excellent in uh, both groups. And also based on a parental report, compliance with spectacle where at 12 months was excellent at 76% of the participants in both treatment groups. So what do we find? The control score was 3.2 in both groups prior to the enrollment. And in over minus group, it improved to 1.8. However, in the non over minus group, it remained at 2.8. And this was statistically significant. However, the improvement in the intermittent exotropia control uh, in the over minus group dissipated once the over minus correction was weaned off down to 2.4. However, the one of the major concerns associated with the over menace treatment is myopic progression. In this study, we measured change in refractive error from baseline to 12 months. And there's a 0.42 diopter of myopic shift in the over menace group and essentially no change in the non over menace group. And the difference of 0.38 diopters was statistically significant. We also looked at the proportion of children having more than one diopter of myopic shift, and 17% of the children treated with over minus spectacles had one diopter or more of myopic shift compared to only 1% in the non over minus group. We also assessed the change in refractive error according to the baseline refractive error. For children with a baseline myopic correction of 
minus six to minus five diopters. There was a 1.07 diopters of myopic shift compared to only 0.16 diopter of myopic shift in the non over minus group with a difference of 0.84 diopters between the treatment groups. And of course, it was statistically significant. Whereas for, ch for children who are not myopic at baseline, there was 0.23 doctors in the over minus group and with no myopic shift in the non over minus group. Which the, the difference was much less. Looking at the proportion of children who have had more than one diopter of myopic shift for children who are not myopic at baseline, and it's 8% for over minus group versus less than 1% for the non over minus group. And for children who were myopic at baseline from minus six to minus 0.5, it was 51% for the over minus group compared to only 2% in the non over minus group. That's a 22 fold increase, a striking difference. So, in conclusion, the overminus lens treatment improves distance IXD control, but the treatment effect is not retained once it is discontinued. And overminus treatment increased the risk of myopic shift significantly if the child already had baseline myopia. So the risk of increased myopia should be discussed with parents if overminus correction is being considered for IXD control. But there are a few things to consider, keep in mind, when we apply these research results uh, result to clinical practice. First, our findings can only be generalized to children three to 10, uh, sharing similar clinical characteristics as our study cohort and using the same over uh, dose and weaning schedule. We also do not know whether myopic shift we found is permanent or temporary, and we're continuing to collect data, reflective error data, in extension phase of our this study. Thank you very much for your time. Donnie, thank you very much. Uh, I, I think your point about not knowing whether it persists is important. Uh, do you have any data on axial lengths in these children? In other words, was, was the increase in myopia due to increased growth of the eye, or was it a change in an accommodative tone? Uh, John, thank you uh, very much uh, for that question. Uh, first, uh, you know, I think this result somewhat surprised us, including myself. And uh, we did not have a baseline axial length. So we don't know whether this is a, as a result of the axial, axial, uh, axial length growth or if it's a, a corneal and lenticular changes. But um, we do know that it's a, uh, there is a significant myopic shift. And I, I do, for, you know, just based on my anecdotal, my personal experience, I do think that the axial length may be impacted. Uh, Donnie, yeah. <clears throat> uh, how um, enthusiastic were the parents uh, if you uh, uh, would uh, advise them to give over minus glasses, or did they, or did they not know that you would over minus these uh, children? Were they randomized? Well, they were randomized, of course. Uh, you know, um, I mean, I, I, I personally, again, I can't speak for the others, but uh, personally, I did not know that the uh, the myopic progression was going to be this significant. So mm -hmm. um, uh, obviously, when we consented these patients, uh, you know, we did discuss the the possibility of ha of them having um, uh, some degree of myo myopic uh, progression. But uh, uh, yes, so back to your question, um, uh, they were randomized. Um, mm -hmm either to a uh, uh, over minus correction or no over minus correction. Uh, and they are they were fully aware of the, the potential um, uh, the side yeah, effect okay, of yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, how, um, how popular is this in, uh, in the United States? In, in our country, we, we almost never do it. You know, I can't speak on behalf of, um, uh, on behalf of everyone in the United States, but obviously yeah. there was enough interest in our group of the pediatric eye disease investigator group. And we actually have 300 different sites all over the country. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And we actually had enough interest, enough people practicing uh, over minus correction for us to proceed with the study. And personally, I, I mean, I did, uh, you know, I wouldn't say it was a very significant portion of my practice, 
but I did, I do, uh, I did, uh, you know, uh, practice over minus correction, even in my own practice, uh, you know, for those patients that just were not uh, interested in, uh, uh, you know, they're bothered by the uh, intermittent exotropia, uh, they're bothered by the appearance, bothered by intermittent diplopia even. Some of these patients, as you know, sometimes they can actually have blur vision and even have intermittent diplopia. So these patients, um, and but they're not really interested in surgery, um, and as I say, um, it's something that we use as a uh, kind of like a, you know a bridge um, yeah. uh, before yeah. we can uh, until, you, uh, yeah. until yeah. you go into surgery. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I certainly used it in children who had poor control. Yes, just as a as a sort of temporizing measure. But as you know, yeah, John. But you know, as you know, some people actually um, you know they like the therapy, so they like to prolong it, like you know sometimes more than a year or to two years. But I do think that the uh, that the result of the study should be considered uh, when you're discussing the the options. Sure, certainly very good data. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, 